Are the campus leaders for the movement in the house this morning? Amen. My name is Jason Dimitri, and I lead the San Francisco Church with my beautiful wife, Sarah, right over here. And uh, we are just so honored to be able to be here for this historic occasion. And I have uh, the great privilege of filling in for Brian Carr. Uh, not Brian Carr. Uh, he is a lot taller than me and extremely handsome. Uh, we used to call him Angel Face, and he really lives up to that. Uh, but Brian Carr could not make it, and so you got me this morning. Amen? But I'm excited to talk to you about converting opinion leaders. You know, it's something that I'm uh, very passionate about. And I believe at this hour, I see it as the focal need of our movement around the world. And that's going back to our ministries and actually converting opinion leaders would possibly be the greatest outcome of this historic first international college campus ministry seminar, amen? You know, converting leaders and making leaders are two different things. And I'm grateful that the title was Converting Leaders. Because we could talk about making leaders. We have a whole seminar about that. Before you can really turn them into leaders, you got to go convert them. And that's going to be done on our campus ministries. You know, it's something we have to understand about Jesus' ministry. And, and really, Kip gave us an incredible tutorial of it today. He is only recorded as baptizing one time, and that's in John 3. And the, but the whole four Gospels is chock full of him collecting and raising up opinion leaders. Let's look at one of those occasions here in Mark 1. You know, this is a famous passage we all know very much from the discipleship study. And let's dig into it in a great way. It says in verse 14 of Mark 1, after John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon, his brother Andrew, cast an into lake for their fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I'll make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and they followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John are both preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the higher men and followed him. You know, this is an amazing scripture that we love so much. And we know that this is scripture of God giving man purpose on this earth. Uh, it's not necessarily our career. That may be what we do for a living. That may be what we do to pay the bills at this moment. But the purpose of man is to go and make disciples. But here's the thing we have to understand. Is that Jesus isn't just wandering about here by the Sea of Galilee giving man a purpose. He is very purposefully there. You know, it says that God sits all the times and places, and this wasn't just a happenstance that he happened to be here calling these people at this moment right here. In fact, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that everything must be done in a fitting and orderly way. This was a very methodical maneuver from Jesus right here. Now, we know from the early chapters of John that this wasn't his first interaction with these guys that we know that Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist, and he spends the day with Jesus, and one of the first things he does, he goes and gets his brother Peter. And some believe that maybe, maybe either John or James were disciples of John the Baptist as well. But it says that here, when he hears that John has been put into prison, that's when he goes to Galilee. In fact, Matthew 4, verse 12, says when Jesus heard that he was in prison, he purposely goes to Galilee to start to collect these disciples of John the Baptist. See, Jesus focused on making leaders and converting opinion leaders in his ministry. You know, we know that John the Baptist fulfilled Isaiah 40 where it says he prepared the way for the Lord. And that was preaching the message of the kingdom. But it was also allowing him to convert and give Jesus some of the first messengers of that message of the kingdom. You know, this was a very focused work, and it's something that we really try and do in San Francisco. You know, I've had the privilege of being in San Francisco for now almost eight years. 
And we've seen since that eight years of starting with 50 people, we've now sent out over 150 people to plant churches and strengthen churches all over the world. And, uh, you know, years and years ago, I got to study with this opinion leader on SF State. His name is Chris Lastra. And uh, in studying with him, you know, it's kind of an infamous story that I'm not going to tell you from the pulpit. But if you want to hear it, come and see me in the fellowship. Um, but, you know, Chris was just an amazing man. I knew that we had to convert this guy. And we, we went, got in there. We studied the Bible with him. He got baptized. He then went to Los Angeles. And now he leads the campus ministry in UH Manoa. And he's here at this conference. You know, I just want to put before you in closing... You know, what if Jesus had walked beside the Sea of Galilee and called these people to come be a fisher of men and they didn't get out of the boat? What do you think would have happened at that point? Do you think he would have just prayed to the Lord of the harvest to somehow drop down leaders from heaven? Do you think he would have called Kip in L.A. and asked for more leaders? No, he would have just kept walking. He would have kept walking until he found those leaders. We have to understand that whatever it takes, you are never going to get the book of Acts happening in your church unless you first do the Gospels. And the Gospels are Jesus converting 12, 70, 120 opinion leaders. You know, at the end of his ministry, he only has 120. One would say, that's not that great for God. But those guys were world beaters. They were opinion leaders, and they turned the world upside down in their generation. And right now, we have 500 opinion leaders here in Miami. What could 500 do? We could turn the world upside down. I'll see you next year at the conference in L.A. with 1,000 opinion leaders in our campus ministry.